We warned the FDA at the time, and this was now 20 years ago, um, that if they didn't label genetically modified foods, there would be a consumer backlash against them because consumers would wonder what they were trying to hide. Have you ever heard of a GMO or genetically modified organism? No. I think I've heard, but I'm not really sure exactly it is. It's been a long time since I've been in college for science. It's like where they add chemicals to the fruit or veggies. I know of it as a crop where they modify the genes to as like increase the yield or the taste or something else about the plant. There's been a switch in the DNA structure. You don't want to lose your seed. We require fast food restaurants to post calorie counts. So what happens in 10, 20 years down the road? To obtain a better understanding of these GMOs, I set out to interview both experts in the field of and those personally affected by genetic engineering. My first question, scientifically, how does an organism become genetically modified? A genetically modified organism or a transgenic crop is when a gene is taken from one organism and put into a different species. This typically is either a bacteria or a virus. For example, splicing the gene responsible for regulating a winter flounder's body temperature into a tomato would yield a frost-tolerant crop. Although humans have selectively bred plants forever, agribusinesses like Monsanto began truly genetically modifying seeds in the 1980s to both maximize farmers' crop yields and subsequently the global food supply. Monsanto is a giant. They're trying to make products that sell, but products that sell are products that people want, and people want products that are going to increase yields. Glyphosate, manufactured by Monsanto and commercially known as Roundup, is an herbicide that farmers spray on Roundup-resistant crops so the plants will grow, but the weeds will die. It's easier for these guys. They don't have to hassle. They don't have to be is accurate, Roundup takes care of it, for now. By utilizing herbicides, pesticides, and advanced technologies, conventional farmers can spend less and produce more, but at what cost? The only problem I don't like about Monsanto is they come after us farmers. They have these, these patented seeds where they say, well, farmers can't use our seeds um, for a second round of crops. So you can buy the seed, you can plant it, you can harvest it, and then you've got to wipe your field clean and you've got to start new every year. That's part of the agreement the farmers sign. They go into farmers' fields and check, even though they're not supposed to. I mean, they trespass. Yeah, we know. Monsanto has filed suit against farmers who save and or replant these patented seeds so as to protect its multi-million dollar investment in genetic research and development. A group of organic farmers in New York even preemptively sued the biotech giant in fear they would be sued if patented seeds from neighboring farms contaminated their fields via wind currents. But how does this information affect the average consumer? Foods that are most often genetically modified are tomatoes, uh, corn, and soybeans, but corn and soybeans are probably the most common. According to the USDA, approximately 90% of all corn and cotton and 93% of all soybean crops planted in the United States are genetically modified. And despite suggestions of noble intent, they're genetically modifying rice to treat vitamin A deficiency throughout the world. There are people starving in Africa, and if we can get them the food that they need, I, I say why not? Both the safety and nutritional value of GMOs is inconclusive and highly disputed. There's no difference between if you ate all organic or you ate regular food. So it's not going to improve your life or health or nothing different, as long as you eat fresh. GMO salmon and farm salmon also produce only one-third of the healthy omega-3s that wild salmon have. So the nutrient value is down by almost 70 percent. Some medical professionals have proposed that the increased consumption of GMOs positively correlates with the 21st century rise in allergies, autism, infertility, and even some forms of cancer. So is it possible that some of what we're seeing is related to what we're eating? The answer is yes, absolutely. Others claim that the intimacy between agro-industry and the federal government has created a revolving door of conflicting interests at the consumer's expense. Private corporations send someone to work in government who's an expert 
in a certain area. That expert then allows for certain advantages that companies take advantage of and then moves back back and forth between the private sector and the public sector. For example, Michael Taylor, former vice president for public policy at Monsanto, is the current food safety czar at the FDA. But the ultimate question is, are these genetically modified organisms safe for human consumption? So you watch these commercials, you know, for, for some uh, drug on TV, and then the last 15 to 30 seconds of the spot is this long list of disclaimers warning you of all the effects and the side effects of these, of these drugs. Well, if you had to do that with a tomato, uh, chances are people wouldn't buy it. There are definitely scientists who will do a study with an end goal in mind, and they will set up the research to show whatever their agenda was at the outset. And I think there are probably people on both sides doing those kinds of things. I certainly think that there needs to be more research done. Right now, we do not have conclusive evidence to show that these products are in fact safe for consumption. This global uncertainty has prompted more than 60 countries, including all those in the European Union, to either restrict or outright ban the production and sale of GMOs. Countries around the world have said, we don't want this genetically modified food. Because neither Congress nor the FDA has yet to mandate the labeling of GM foods, despite grassroots propositions and protests, some food companies have proactively assigned a non-GMO seal to their products. We're going to force stringent labeling on everyone, except for in the case of GMO foods. That's a problem because again, it's, it's where government has now decided that in this case, this particular area doesn't have to comply. Without transparency from our federal government, we are left in the dark. So who is responsible for determining whether or not GM foods should be labeled, banned, or simply ignored? You decide.